All right. Listen, everybody, we are back. The Old Ladies First panel is back. Y'all make sure y'all follow us at Bondi Blue, at Jamie, that's me, at Nisi Dixon. If you have any of your tea that you would like for us to talk about on the Old Ladies First panel, if you want our advice, if you want my MF and advice, then please go ahead and send it to Old Ladies First panel at gmail.com. All right, ladies, we ready? Ready. Yes. And we're ready. Okay. So we sent this link out to our members with the expectation that we were going to have Letitia Pearson on. We um, scheduled this a month ago. Um, and, you know, we realize sometimes people forget. So Jamie sent an email early this morning. Um, and then also as we were preparing for this live, getting on, you know, we hadn't heard anything back. So we're just going to go ahead and press forward with the show because as everybody knows who follows me, I'm going to be out of town and on a retreat. So we have no show Thursday. So this is going to be the show going to air on Thursday. Okay, since people won't come in and, you know, you know, say they're going to be here and they don't show up because I feel like they're just disrespectful of our time because we all have shit to do. Okay, so, yes, ladies, um, opinions, thoughts, feelings. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Low key, that's exactly where my thought is. I I'm good. I I'm with it. Y'all with it. Okay, it's a show. Guess, no guess. <laughs> Period. Okay, <laughs> and, and that's how we roll. All right. Um. I kind of do want to be messy a little bit before we get into the shows because we're not going to be here for a long time, y'all. We're going to talk about three shows. We might do one gossip topic and we're getting off of here. But since we were talking about House of Aaron and his video that he put out today about mm -hmm. him going on Heavenly's channel. And listen, girl, um, y'all know I like to stay out the mess. Y'all know I don't like YouTube mess. But everything that he said made me feel like that was exactly what happened to me. Okay. I was like, oh my God, Aaron, if only you knew. I, I'm starting to feel like Dr. Heavenly is doing one of two things. One, you you not organized. You not, you not sis. You not. And it's because you don't care about YouTube. YouTube is just a check. You don't mm -hmm. care about it, but you know you right. can get up here and say whatever you want to say, and people gonna come and watch. But you don't really care about it. Money grab, right? <laughs> so that's the one thing. And the other thing is, I think she's been in reality TV for so long that she thinks blindsiding people and catching people off guard is a tactic to get a, a um entertaining response out of them. Mm -hmm. Because that's very much what happened when I went on her channel. Let me tell y'all. So when I went on her channel, now I. I, you know, I was like, yeah, Heavenly, of course I want to be on your channel. You know, let's do it. You know, I'm keeping it cute. And um, she didn't even say anything before we went live. I thought I would at least get a, hey, girl, we just going to run through it right quick before the live started. But no, bitch, I was backstage by myself until the live started and we hopped on. And then she didn't watch the episode. And from what I understand, she didn't watch the episode with Erin either. So you got people who are thinking they're coming on your channel to talk about something that you already know about. But really, you kind of have us on your channel so we can interview you. But you I don't say that. say that. I was about to say that. That's why I started laughing. More so like, yeah, come on my platform, interview me for the check. <laughs> Ooh, because it's more so like, I don't have to. On one hand, you're thinking like, okay, you don't have to watch it because you lived it. But she don't but, be knowing what, what happened. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I thought it was just very interesting that he decided to make a video talking about it. Because normally we keep these things behind the scenes because don't nobody want no mess. Like, mm -hmm. I don't do mess. Y'all know I don't do mess. I'm not arguing with nobody over no, no YouTube shit. And honestly, when it happened to me, even though I clocked it, I didn't take it personal because I, you know, I'm light on my feet, bitch. What's up? Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. All right, then let's do it then. And, you know, I saw people in the comments saying shit. And I was just like, fuck y'all. Um, So there's that. And then I continue on. Yeah, but for Aaron, you know, it seemed as if it might have really gotten to him the things that were being said in the comments. And that's the thing that kind of made me upset because yeah. I feel like, 
you know, like it's one thing for people to be rude to you on your channel about your opinion. It's a whole nother thing to go on somebody's channel and feel like you got set up to look dumb. Like mm -hmm. it's from Delia. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. She was very unprofessional when you ladies interviewed her as well. Well, you say that we didn't. Yeah. Listen, you say that we didn't. I mean, but we professionals, so we roll with it and we do what we gotta do regardless. And it ain't no hurt feelings, it ain't no hard feelings. But if we want to speak on the truth, it was absolutely it's been unprofessional the whole time. But nah, bitch, I I absolutely take being a part of a viral moment for the unprofessionalism. I sure will. So cheers to that. Okay. Um, you know. Girl, I told you. I didn't even pour my glass of wine before we got up here. Girl, Ooh, it's all been last neither. minute. Neither. It's all been last minute, child. I wish y'all would have got y'all wine, but this felt stressful Look, to me. I'm this close. Listen, mm -hmm. do we need to like the video so that y'all can go and get y'all wine? Because we yeah, can do it. Mine okay, we're gonna yeah, like the video okay. and I'm then we'll listen, right. like the video, and we're gonna come back for the TV uh chat of it all. Okay, hold up, like the video, y'all. Okay, thank you so much, Dahlia, and happy belated happy birthday, birthday to you. Yes, happy birthday. Okay, listen. Look, we wait for Nisi to come back because she had to get her wine. Yeah, some of them comments were out of line. Um, yes. I remember oh, when she was? asking Bondi, okay, now tell me what happened. And I was just like, tell you what happened on a show that I don't review until Tuesdays normally. Ooh, okay. Embarrassing. <laughs> I'm glad I had watched it. I ain't gonna lie. When I heard, um, when I heard Aaron talk about it, you were the first person that you know what I'm saying came to mind. I was like, ooh, that's why I was like, boop. Look at this. Because you know about our interview first, and then I was like, oh yeah, that did. I didn't think about Bondi because Bondi still had a successful interview. So I thought about the time where she came on our panel and we felt like, mm. oh, that was I. And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. You know, even though your interview was still, well, it's funny I'm calling it an interview, Bondi. Even though your feature <laughs> on her channel was still good, mm. um, the same thing happened to you. Yeah. And, and it's so funny because even for our situation, I feel like we definitely learned from that. Um, it was definitely a learning experience. So listen, don't take it personally when we say that it was unprofessional and we felt a way about it. Um, but ultimately, you know, things work out for, for your best at all times. Remember that, people, because we learned something from that. We learned that we no longer play games with you hoes. We just jump on and ask y'all the questions and send y'all about y'all way. Okay, yeah. we're not gonna cater okay, the shows around you, we're not gonna be cute about it, it's just straight to the teeth. And you know, if that's what y'all want, that's what we're gonna give y'all. But we was just trying to be cute about it, but you know, I that know was how you know in the past. I do I can appreciate him being open. I don't know, it's something about I just love Aaron. So I like when he got on the video and he just really poured his heart out and he just told everybody how he was feeling. I like that. I feel like if I do it, it's cool when he do it. Yeah, it's no, we can't do that, when I do it because I feel <laughs> like I'm not always calm like that. You know what I'm saying? But I just I, I like how he just delivers his content as a whole. I be yes. feeling like when I express myself, it may come off a little ghetto or something like a, a little more. Um, it doesn't give ghetto, but upset oh, or I don't know. I, I it gives funny. Sure? It gives hilarious. Does it? I don't want. I want them to take me serious. 
They do. It, it gives. I might hit you, but you're gonna be laughing when I hit you. He punched and he laughed and he punched yeah. and he laughed. I'm trying to make a light of it a little bit. <laughs> Just like about, you know, I appreciate that he did that. Though. Um, I hate that he experienced that. People can be extremely mean yes. on somebody else's platform, and then you dragging this person. Like it never feels good because I feel like the person that's in the popular uh, um, position, they may not get as ridiculed as a new person on. Because see, I'm sure everybody probably felt like Aaron went over there looking for some clout or something, but it's like he was invited to come over to the channel. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like people don't always take a liking to that when smaller YouTubers go over to bigger YouTubers' channels. Mm -hmm. and they just may feel a way about that, but I don't know why. That's why I felt the need to say something, because I was like, I don't want y'all to think that he was bullshitting. Like, no. Like, I that's too. exactly what happened. <laughs> I, too, was victimized. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, with that being said, child, I still be on heavenly side when it comes to her versus Contessa. All right. So even though I feel like you are a badass middle schooler, essentially trying to provoke people so you can see what response you're gonna get out of them. I noticed that when I met Heavenly. I think Heavenly does a lot of things so that she could see what the person's response is gonna be. But I think if you remember a few things. Ain't nobody going to fight and you ain't going to punk me. You'll be just fine. That's Listen, how I feel. It took me to the end of the damn season at the reunion after watching Funky Dineva's uh, interview all the way back to watching the reunion for me to realize Contessa didn't make no damn sense. As much as I have been like None. team Contessa, I was so confused listening to her talk to Funky. I said, how can you say you never confided in her, but then turn around and say she shared confidential information? I'm like, I know I'm not crazy while I'm watching this, right? It was mm -mm. very confusing. It was giving um, a bit of BS, Miss Contessa. Mm -hmm. I must say. I have this to be honest. It was a good interview. Me has mm -hmm. been a, and I think it's clear. I just hate that nobody else is calling it out. Like, Simone, call your friend out. Um, this whole thing has been Contessa projecting her guilt onto Heavenly because mm. that's the easiest person for her to do it on. You feel bad for dogging your husband in front of everybody, and the easiest person to take the blame for that is Heavenly. But the thing is, like, she almost couldn't even comprehend that she had responsibility in it because you brought it to the show. Even Andy had to say, Well, you did. So if it took Andy to say it, you need to, you know, self-reflect instead of mm. pointing at Heavenly. Mm. I absolutely I feel, agree. I did feel like Heavenly using the word dogged out, you dogged out your husband. Like if y'all came to me and we having a conversation about our men or whatever, and for me to go to social media and be like, you just, she was dogging him out. Like one, that's me putting 20 on 10 when mm -hmm. we're just having a conversation. But at the same time, I'm like, Contessa, you had to have told her something though. Like it is a common thing that we may do. We may vent to our friends and stuff. Heavenly mm -hmm. may have put 20 on 10 with the dog situation, just saying dog, but girl, yeah, and Contessa was full of I'm gonna tell you. I'm about to I, do. I think she, she did. I think she was just think venting she did. her husband, like just nah. talking to her friend, venting. It's not the. It's not that part though. It's the like when we think about the past few seasons, like the last two seasons, we have watched Contessa make it seem like she's scared. Scott, somebody had to remind me of that in the live, and I remembered her having specific conversations about him, and then mm -hmm. when he would come around, she would get quiet, like she was scared to talk around him. Like I she made see her it being seem scared. like she made it seem like she was scared of him on some level, and then and after that, all her friends to talk for her. And yes, still, you were good with him. Well, you know, she said something in that interview with Funky. She said her husband is a very private person, so he was disappointed. So you know, disappointed in them talking about the divorce because they were going to get a divorce or whatever. So maybe that's maybe I ain't gonna say she's scared of him, but I maybe. She doesn't like the the arguments that may come out. So she I let mean, the friends talk so it don't yes. seem like she's the one spewing the information. We know um, what it is. You don't want to have to deal with him. So you let your friends run it for you because you're scared of what mm -hmm. the response will be. We understand right. it. Like, I get it totally. 
But at the same time, I feel like you can't then turn around and act like Heavenly put some information out that you shared in private mm -hmm. and now everybody's running off of that when she said that shit she's put out rumors i was like contessa what rumors did she put out because we she didn't hear nothing about but nobody took it like you was physically being abusive she said physically no mentally and emotionally yes and yep. then when contessa followed it up by saying that she and scott fight like they'll say whatever they know will hurt the person the most i'm like that's abusive like that's abusive and to that's know that you're yeah. about the yes, both ways, both of y'all. And I feel like they do both abuse each other. It's not just him. It's also you, because I feel like the way she they would bring those kids into the arguments, like how she tried to make it seem like Heavenly was lying yeah. about uh, bringing her daughter into it. I'm like, no, Contessa, because I've watched how you and Scott talk to y'all kids and kind of pitch y'all kids against the other parent. That's why your kids are so involved in y'all shit and little, yeah. you know, they do too much. And it's because y'all talk to y'all kids like they adults. I mm -hmm. know because I was mm -hmm. one of them kids. Mm -hmm. So I know why the little girl feels that she can talk to people and handle people, adults, the way she does. Mm -hmm. It's because both of her parents talk to her like she's an adult about these shit. Mm. Yeah, I think Contessa would make for an interesting general conversation about how victims can be abusers as well or front-facing victims let me say that because that's her abuse tactic she tries to manipulate people by coming off as the victim and that's what she did in previous uh seasons but at the time her enemy was her husband now mm -hmm. that her enemy is not her husband she's become the victim of heavenly so mm -hmm. let's talk about that I was thinking that Nisi when Bondi was Bondi was talking and she mentioned how they talk at each other and stuff. I was like, I don't I've never seen a time in and I'm not really trying to take it for Scott, but I'm being honest, that he's been so aggressive. But I've seen how Contessa has been. So I feel like when they have conversations, if we say things that's gonna hurt the other, I'm like, nah, I think you might take things too far more than he does. So I think you was you was getting to someone when you said that, Nisi. And we all know she I brought it see. to the group to embarrass him. The, like that was an abuse tactic right there. What was going on in your household, you would have wanted it to be private, but you were so enraged that you wanted to embarrass him. And now that you done shot yourself in your own damn foot. Hilarious. You playing crazy. Yeah. Mr. Girl was wrong for that. Like, I literally had to watch this whole argument, like, again. I had already watched Q's interview, and I'm just like, Contessa, this is not making any sense to me. Like, it's just not, because, I don't know, it's like you contradicting yourself when you, the more you talk. As much as I would want to blame Heavenly, I can't really blame her because you contributed. Like, at the end of the day, you did. So, I'm sorry, I had to that's what she was at with it. I agree. She did contribute. And that was my whole thing. Heavenly is definitely one of those people that don't give up about what she say to you. If she feels like it's the truth, if she feel like it's funny, it don't matter. She's going to say it and she's not going to care about your feelings. Contessa, you was just fine with that when it wasn't about you. So it's annoying for me for you to grandstand throughout your whole interview with Funky Dineva. She grandstanded the whole time. And then on top of the grandstanding, I feel like you want everybody to see you as perfect in these situations. You don't want to take any responsibility. Even when you say you shared information with friends, but she's not your friend. That's a lie. Heavenly was your friend. Heavenly really does love you, I feel like. And honestly, like when I saw Heavenly in, in Huntsville, one of the first things that came out of her mouth was that Contessa tried to fight her. That's how you know she was hurt behind it. Because it was the mm, first thing she said like to me. Out of nowhere. To yeah, like. That up. Like, let me not bring this lady. No, nah, we talking about Mary Dementia. Like, Buffy talking about her weight when she first started going off on Candy. Yeah. Bringing it out of nowhere. So that was like, something that you got you got an insecurity about on your own. But for Heavenly to bring that, I don't know, after just seeing you, just like, hey, Bondi, girl, Contessa tried to fight. Yeah, that did hurt her. That hurt that I lady. think it did. And I think Contessa just doesn't want to admit that she played a part because she wants to be with Scott now. But I feel like she just won't be with Scott until the kids grow up because I don't think she's happy. That's why I think she's but I outwardly to, projecting. 
I want to try to beat Heavenly Ass too. Now that I think about it, because Contessa, <laughs> nobody called anybody a B I T C H on the stage until Heavenly starts saying real hard, "You bitch." Did it? Did it? Let me I, slap file you. Then. Wait, hold so up, I hold didn't up. Even, because I, I feel like Contessa like started it though. Contessa she said call her she called her no, but she called her a clown. Yeah, Bonnie, yeah. A she clown called her a clown. over a bitch. No, I no. You might as well call me a bitch. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to tell you. I'm about to tell you. I'm sorry. I'm, good night. Y'all I mean, sound like know how uh, easy, the ladies on Beverly Hill. They were like you know evil. How easily I say bitch though. You know how easily I say bitch. So if you call but me you a clown. You but know, no, you know I, I feel. I think a clown is really, yeah, like like a bum ass nigga. Like a clown is like a old a bitch ass nigga to me. Mm -hmm. So you call me a clown, yeah. I'm gonna be like, bitch, who the fuck you calling a clown? Ho, like <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> to all these people. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, cause uh, Doctor Heavenly called her a hoe before that. Oh yeah, but that's then, how that's how heavenly told. She called that lady no, no, a hoe, and did, then uh, Contessa said, "Oh no, I ain't never been a hoe in my life. That's in your mo. That's okay. why I would have whooped her ass too. I would have tried. Okay, to get I'm a, to heavenly. Devil's advocate, Jamie. Devil's advocate. <laughs> if I was Contessa and I felt like I wanted to beat her ass, then I would. Then fine, fine. But on. Uh oh, you really fight her, so she be say, say it again, say it again. It um, it locked. It okay, froze. all right. I was saying that even though you write about that, Heavenly has done things that a regular person, bitch, I will beat your ass for talking to me like that for sure. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Contessa, you rejoiced when she was doing it to Toya, and you was cool with it. First of all. And second of all, bitch, you know that Heavenly don't want to fight you. So you bullying her because you know you can't win the verbal argument. So you want to keep threatening her throughout the reunion. And that's another mm. thing. That's another thing, Jamie. She hit that lady. They say that she she tried to put pause on her before the reunion even started. So <gasps> once the did. reunion start, bitch, you could be all of the hoes and bitches that I ever thought of before. Once you tried to fight me on at my mm, in my trailer I about that. six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And she came at Heavenly, like, initially, I feel like Contessa took it to that level without cuss words when she called her a clown. It was like a, it was the like clown three thing. sentences of something that she said. And I was like, ooh, like, oh, you taking it there. But Contessa being extra the whole reunion, because even when she said that shit to Anila about, oh, here go all the stuff they stole from you. I melted it yeah, down. I was like, hollered. you did? Oh. You thought it was funny? I didn't think it was funny. I am not a fan of I thought of it was Anima. whack. <laughs> I think Anima's whack. I think Quiet's okay. whack. I think so, too. so let me Anima's say this. A follower. I do think Anila is a follower, but I also feel like she didn't start that rumor and they were trying to throw it on her. I think she was trying to use it against Toya for sure, yeah. but I don't think she orchestrated or started, started shit started it. and mm -hmm. they tried to kind of throw it on her at the reunion, which is why she felt ganged up on because I think... In in essence, they thought it's easier to just throw it on Anila. I think she's an easy target. I could see so, that. Let's just kind of throw it on Anila. She ain't gonna do shit. Like that's how I feel. Like Heavenly and Quad probably talked about that shit when they orchestrated this whole "we gonna set Toya up at the party" thing. Because I think it was the two of them. Yeah. I think okay. Heavenly and Quad had that. Because remember, Heavenly was like, uh, can, "I mean, Anila not smart enough. She would need uh um Miss uh Gomez to help her." And I was like, "You know what, bitch? You're right." And I think y'all put a battery in her back with that seat. And because of the way Toya talked bad about her, remember when Toya told her to shut up while they was talking? It reminded me Toya talked so bad to Anila last season for no fucking reason. Other than the fact that Anila was just trying to get cool with other people, but you have to do that when you come on a reality show. You can't just be Toya's friend. And Toya was beefing with everybody. So that I remember that. Was cool. And I, I just, no I feel like it's fair game a little bit with Anila and Toya. It's fair game. I didn't feel no type of way when it came to Anila because she getting to a point to where she thinks she want to play them games but then when them games get played back to you you talking about oh you know you know I'm scared what happened to our friendship and it's like no stand on it stand right on it. so she very much is a follower which I I think that's why she leans towards heavenly towards quad these stronger personalities yes and yes. 
is very much giving, I'll show you how to move in this group. But the thing is, if you're going to do something, then stand on it. 1000%. And when Bondi was speaking on them probably roping Anila in or whatever you mentioned, I feel like it was definitely a setup. It was all three of them that came together, which is why it just makes so much more sense now. Heavenly told Toya what she told her, right? Anila and Toya was already getting into it. They all knew what was supposed to be going down, which is why Anila looked at the friend and said, you need to say something. You need to speak up. Mm -hmm. And that's what I can't get with when it comes to Anila. It's the lack of accountability. And it honestly makes me think of Letitia from Love and Marriage Huntsville. It's always, huh? Ooh. What? Who? I didn't say that. Oh, you are so lying. And it's like, everybody not lying. Like, And then they did the flashback when she sat in Toya's face and said she had nothing to do with it, but then they flash back to her telling the girl you need to say something you need to, you need to speak right up that's now. why i i can't do a needle and that's another reason why she uh well separate reason when i saw her apologizing to quad at the end it was exactly as Misty mentioned she needs a strong personality friend she needs those friends that's gonna probably stick up and stand up for her because she ain't gonna never stand up for her damn self that's why she apologized to quad i'm already going at it with toya i don't want to be going at it with another strong personality mm -hmm. on the show like i can't <clears throat> stand it i i, can, I agree i, can't. I, I can't agree do, i can't do a needle but in that moment when Anila and Quad was going at it the first time, I felt like Quad was really like trying. That was the moment that Quad was trying to throw her under the bus because Anila's whole, yeah, because Anila's whole point was I didn't start it, mm -hmm. and that was her whole point. And Quad said, "Well, I didn't say you started." She was like, "Well, bitch, what we arguing for?" Because I feel like y'all tried to make it seem like. I started the shit. Why well, was and trying we, to get it off any? Every, she was trying to get it off her. She was trying to put it on Doctor Heavenly, then it on Simone, Simone. Then it on Anila. So that's why I felt like it was Quad trying to make it seem like Anila was lying about how they had talked about the shit. But really, you said first you said Simone said it, then you said Heavenly said it, then you Correct. said Anila told y'all because girl. Anila, come on. I mean, Big Toya girl. cheated though. I just want to say that Toy, Toya cheated on her husband. <laughs> Toya cheated on her husband. <laughs> Did you she did people <laughs> acrobat flipped out of that question, though? Yes. Yeah, she did. She I mean, I want to believe her. Not say that. She said, why would I say it to Heavenly? A person that why? has a, a large Because you knew platform. she was going to say something. Because you knew she was going to say something. I mean, I can't think about it like that. She immediately tried to make people think about heavenly on youtube and it's like hold on wait 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 the you just you just raised the trigger for something else when the main question was about you <laughs> what mm. did you say so when she decided to answer the question that way i was like oh but she did it true she didn't necessarily answer you do have a point that actually went over my head she did it so well that i didn't even think about the fact that she well what well what did you say should have been the follow-up question yes. versus mm -hmm. I just letting it go. That. She listen, Simone got let off the hook several times, y'all. Several times she got let off the hook because it was, I mean, she brought the rumor about Toya. If we if we call it how quiet said it, she brought the rumor about Toya and she brought the rumor about uh quiet cheating with the because mm -hmm. she knew she friends with the contractor and all of yeah. this type of shit and listen i feel like i don't care what quad says quad absolutely fucks married men and i think that toya <laughs> cheating on her husband and i'm gonna tell you why quad is okay I was gonna say, you gotta tell me that so quad <laughs> i'm in denial about both so please tell okay me. let's go for oh. one Quad fucks with married men because Quad does not want to be with anybody. She don't want to be a wife. She don't want to change her lifestyle for any man. Being with a married man means you can have him when you want to. He already has his, you know, his money or whatever. And you can fuck with him and then leave him alone because he got to go home to his wife, which means you can go back to your life. He and leave okay bread <laughs> head leave okay so i absolutely believe that choir will fuck a married man because a lot of a lot of single well-accomplished women do not want to deal with a, a, a all the time man all the time man wants you to fuck cook and clean and all of this shit just like destiny was saying on love and marriage it's messing up Bonnie. damn oh damn she was feeling the tea she was giving the she truth was. the internet don't want her to say it internet yes the internet the internet is hating but i'm gonna say it again for y'all 
Quad is fucking with a married man because a lot of people fuck with married people because they don't want somebody to always be on their ass. They want to be able to fuck with you and then leave you alone. And the only way for that to happen is for you to have, a, you know, a wife or somebody that you have to answer to. That's the only mm -hmm. way to keep a nigga from trying to become your owner. And it's, it's just, it is what it is. I've heard many older women say it. Not owner. Because that's lady, how they see it. The way Contessa brought up the woman block quad did, did have me thinking for a second. Like, now, why would Miss Ma'am block you? Like, what what is that? Don't nobody know who she is, for real. Like, why would she just sit up there and just block? And even if it wasn't the contractor, I think that as a... If I'm trying to fuck with a man with money, but I don't want him to try to be controlling me, I'm going to fuck with a married man because he's going to fuck with me. He's going to give me his money, his good dick, and then he's going to go home to his wife because he don't want to keep her up waiting too long. Mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all, yeah. Quad is not... When Quad actually wants to date to be with somebody long term, then we will see them. But until then, she going to fuck with people that's going to have their bread right, that's going to give her the attention while they with her, and then get out of her face. Mm -hmm. That's why she fucks with married men. Period. And that's so cool. one of the oh. things they didn't speak about. They just kept saying, oh, well, it was stuff outside the show. And it's like, well, why are your friends falling out with you to the point to them spreading this rumor about you? Like, that's that's what I was interested in. You know she didn't did something to the friends, but I, I feel like as a rule, when Quiet is not married, Quiet is fucking somebody else's husband. I don't care what she's talking about. We didn't say this too many times about you. Then, outside of that, when you that's come to talk, you saying it. <laughs> Toya told on herself we all think that Toya's cheating because of the shit that Toya says about Eugene but the thing that killed it for me was when she was talking about Dr. Jackie talking about well Jackie I, you know Jackie was like you told me it was my fault and they played the clip back and she said you know he was lonely mm -hmm. when she sat there and cried about being lonely y'all I felt it in my heart mm -hmm. it was the most sincere moment that Toya had she really is yeah. lonely and she used the word lonely over and over again. And you're right. I felt the same way. When they showed the flashback of her saying lonely, I was like, ooh, so if he did it because he was lonely. And then you lonely did it. Now, then you're you doing it. It's something interesting yeah. now oh, that yeah. I think about it because <clears throat> I'm not saying that, Toya, that ain't me, girl. I'm just saying it's interesting. And what makes it even more interesting is how he got up there and said he worked damn near three different jobs. Still. To this day, why, Eugene? She make more money than you. Why are you working more? That's a lot. That's a lot. I don't know what the fuck got going on, Carter. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I think that Eugene, I think Eugene likes his life. I think he loves his wife. I think he loves his kids. But I think he knows he cannot satisfy her. So I think he stays at work because he likes work. He likes to be at work. He likes to feel needed. He likes to feel like he's a master of the universe at work. You go home and fuck Toya and you're going to feel like something wrong. Remember, he had to take testosterone shots. She already talked about his dick being little. She's not sexually satisfied. So he knows he can't sexually satisfy her. So I think in some place, he's like, I'm going to work as much as possible so I cannot be home so you can go and do what you need to do. And I can get my feel of being master of the universe at the hospital. A bungee done broke the thing all the way down, huh? Did y'all about cry, though, <laughs> whenever she said you called my husband a bitch? And she said, I didn't call him a bitch. I called him Eugina. <laughs> that was so <laughs> mean. It now, was, let somebody have said something about Dr. G when she was with him. Hmm. Cause she stayed with the theatrics. But guess who else said that? Guess who else called him a bitch? Contessa, who she's sitting right there trying to be friends with this season. She calls your she husband did. a bitch. She Talking did. about say that Scott, say that Scott's abusive to his face. Bitch, tell you Gene he a bitch to his face again. You think we scared? Like the wow. fuck? That's why I'm looking at Contessa sideways because you do not like Toya. And now all of a sudden you friends with Toya because Toya don't like uh Heavenly. To me. That's exactly what Destiny did when Destiny decided that she wanted to be on Mel's bad side. So now I'm going to go be extra cool with Letitia. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's giving you too worried about being an adversary to a bitch that you're really mad that they don't want to be your friend no more. You're too worried about that. That's weird. Stop. Yeah. Do y'all think uh, Anila and Quaz should return? Yes. What is this? What do you think, Jamie? Yeah, tell us. Quad can go. Quad can go. She doesn't excite me at all. I feel like she does a lot. 
And Anila, if I have to sit and watch her continue to follow and not stick up for herself or anything, then we can find somebody. Y'all can bring Audra back. You mute, Bonda. You mute. When it comes to Anila, I'm going to say this. And this is the point I made in my video. At the end of the day, you can say what you want. We see a lot of Anila in her home. We, we see more of Anila in her home than we see of most other housewives. We don't see them in their homes like that, first of all. Second of all, I like Kieran. I don't care working. what anybody say. I love Kieran. <clears throat> we but, see Toya in her house, too. The ladies not, that don't work, not as don't much see though. I don't feel like we see Toya at home as much as we see Anila. But outside of that, I feel like Anila is doing what everybody else is doing. She's friends with half of the group and she's beefing with the other half. Why? Like the way Contessa was going at her neck, I think Contessa validated Anila being there because why were you so upset? You should have paid her dust. Usually to me, if a person is boring and they have no conflict, that's when they need to go. Mm -hmm. Jackie is the only person that gets to sit on that stage and be boring with no conflict. And, won't move. Yeah. and, and, and I don't want her to. Always be and, I, and I don't want her to. You know why? Because she she gives the show validity. She makes she the she gives the these are doctors that matter. No matter what, Jackie is on her business when it comes to helping women with their bodies and all of that shit. I've mm. learned so much from watching Dr. Jackie on this show. I'm looking for that old shot when my ass get old. So ultimately, like, <laughs> I feel like there's no reason for her to go anywhere. And Anila is doing her job. Anila has stuff going on in her personal life. Anila is arguing with you hoes on the show. And she's friends with some of you hoes on the show. There's okay. no reason for I her to leave. Good. And yeah. Quad is entertaining. If she, returns, I'll, if she returns, I'll deal. I ain't got no choice but to deal. They need somebody else. Signed a multi contract, but they need somebody you know, else. They need another Peter doctor. I would Here's like another Santos, female. which I appreciate. They not getting. I like him because they the only non black people on the show. Um, I love it. They they need I love to Karen. stay. They need. She to should. Stay. They should stay because of Kieran. Kieran gives yes. Peter Thomas tease. Your wife might be boring, but we need you to stay because you don't give a fuck. Her. I'm gonna tell you, I don't give a fuck what about Eugene feelings. I thought it was hilarious. I don't give a fuck about y'all can dress as robbers, but to be clear, being a robber and moving all the time are two different things. Y'all are choosing to move over and over again. Then people are not choosing to get robbed. So I personally they not, feel like <clears throat> but they about to get robbed as many times as Toya and them to move. So since she wanna stay there. <laughs> not true. It's only been twice. It's only been so twice. far. But Toya and them have moved like four, yet. five times. She said, maybe if that's what I said, I said, she's about to get robbed because Andy said, oh, so it's going to take three times for y'all to get out. Yes. So Third time's I, a charm. I, she done spent all that money. So stay. I'm not mad at Anila and Kieran for feeling like we just spent millions of dollars on this house and y'all going to have to drag us up out this motherfucker before we leave. Because I wish Toya I mean, and Jean would have felt like that. It is their house. I mean, she can do that. But you know what? If if Toya and Eugene dress up as a security system, I'm going to laugh, find it hilarious, and I'm going to look at Anila and Kieran like I need for y'all to just take it on the chin. <laughs> Not a security system. Take it on the chin. Because, I mean, y'all know me. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. I'm, I'm a fair motherfucker above all. If I can laugh at your shit... <clears throat> I'm not about to get mad at you for laughing at mine, bitch. I'm going to laugh, too. Like, all right, bitch, you got me. You got me. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else that we want to talk about from the reunion show besides... I'm sorry. Can I say this? Eugene, sweetheart. It's giving bitch assness. I like Eugene. I actually think Eugene is one of the best husbands. He cooks. You know what I'm saying? He looks like he can make a mean steak, some good lasagna. But Eugene, you often, to me, put yourself in the weak position... And I don't know why. Like when it comes to Toya, you hear what everybody says about you. You say nothing in response to it. Not really. You just let them say it. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the situation with Kieran, you want to be so upset because it was, you know, we moved from this place to that place. Nobody gives a fuck. At the end of the day, y'all been on this show and y'all have moved damn near every fucking season mm -hmm. y'all have been on the show. Running at this point. It is. And as a man, I feel like you should just be able to take it on the chin and move past it instead of feeling like Kieran is not really my friend because he refuses to lie to me and say that this is no longer funny just because my feelings are hurt. Because that's what you want. You want Kieran to be like, you know what, Eugene, you're feeling hurt. You're right, but I'm sorry. And then go home and laugh to his wife behind your back and say that he's acting like a bitch. What would but, you, you think know. of the guys? Because it seems like it was funny to the guys until it they was. saw him being upset and then nobody else said 
anything. Do you you think they? I think changed? Cecil did. I think Cecil did. Cecil mm -hmm. and Curtis seemed to be the main ones that was like, nah, that shit was still funny, even though Eugene was upset. Like to me, it seemed like I heard them both vocalize, nah, that shit was funny. Um, even though Eugene was upset, I think that everybody kind of thinks Eugene is a little sensitive, mm -hmm. and they because they've known him longer, they just kind of know when to let off. You know how how some dudes sense. can be. Yeah. You know, y'all know how y'all friend it is. Because they probably, I feel like if it was one of them, I don't even know if Eugene would have took it as serious as he did with Kieran. Mm, I don't know if he would have been that might upset. Be it. But mm -hmm. if it was, I feel like they probably, based on the history of the relationship, would have been like, yeah, yeah, my bad, dog. I ain't mean it like that. They would have moved on. Yeah. I Kieran, I think it's coming from that. the I don't want to be punked by black people thing. <laughs> but right. I also I think. He genuinely thinks that it's still funny too, though. It is, I think though. he genuinely thinks that nah, that shit was funny. It was. <laughs> but I think Cecil and them were were thinking, oh, I'm glad somebody else said it. Like we couldn't say it because we're close to him, but because Karen don't know him, thank you for saying it. Cause it's giving bitch assness, Eugene. Like, oh my God, even if you are but her, just say, all right, it's cool and get over it. Cause you have moved. 50 11 times <laughs> nigga you have i just want them to stay like why did y'all build y'all dream home only to leave it like to get the money off of the home but for what like i need to know the big plan i'm and not you know that they the didn't plan. i don't think the documents were real that she gave andy I think they were real really? because they validated what Audra so. said about them making barely a thousand, I'm mean, barely a million, but it also didn't talk about the debt they owed. So you can show us paperwork about how much you made and not show us the debt that you were in and try to make it seem like Audra was lying. But I believe they were in debt because to be clear, D Heavenly said we saw the paper. The Outside of that, how much money you spend on the actual house, you still spend more money on landscaping, furniture, People moving shit into the house, having the house cleaned after it was black. At the end of the day, you spend way more money than what you actually spend on the sale, you know, on the buying of a house or the mm. sale of a house, whatever. So to me, it feels like you might have made a million dollars, but you probably spent more when you bought the house and furnished the house. And mm. you only got a million back. That's not a lot. Considering... You know, we're not tallying in how much y'all spent on furniture to furnish the house before y'all then sold it for just a million over the selling amount. So, yeah, no, I think y'all had debt that y'all had to pay off, like Audra said. Mm -hmm. Which really ain't a bad idea, for real. If you no, got to pay I it off, not. like just sell, no. sell the house, get back good in a year or two. It's just a bit awkward when you constantly do this and then you also want to brag about or talk down on other people's fashions but brag on your own so it is giving that you're trying to keep up with the joneses so that's where it doesn't make sense like it's not a bad thing to sell your house and get more money but it's bad when you're a person that always want to talk about labels and this and that and you don't even got your finances right like that's how it comes off she the first one to say something didn't like the house yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's the first one to say something about everybody. Like Toya is the first one to point out that your clothes ain't on point, that you know this ain't that, that ain't this. To me, she comes off as somebody that's genuinely unhappy and miserable. So she takes moments she's to like kind of you know get that off on other people because she knows she can't keep doing it to Eugene. She may talk shit about Eugene in front of everybody, but in their household, I believe that she curtails everything to make Eugene feel good. I, I do. Yeah, it's giving Giselle. It's giving Giselle. Um, but not not. See, I saw you. I saw you guys. Hey, well, wait. wait. It's, <laughs> Tell it's us. Giving Giselle like just a tidbit. Whenever you said she has the time to do that, like these women don't have time to care about what the other woman is wearing or to either like criticize people the way that Toya does. And usually we only see people act out like that when they have the capacity to do so. Mm -hmm. With you feeling lonely and your husband being gone, you have plenty of capacity to worry about what other people are doing. And that's what Giselle does. But Giselle has it on a broader scale because her capacity is, you know, 100 million gallons. Right. So, right. so I, that's what I mean when I say it's giving a little bit of Giselle. I'm glad you mm -hmm. say that because I believe it's time for us to move on to Real Housewives of Potomac. Is everybody ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Real Housewives of Potomac, since you brought up Jizzy Giselle. So, first of all, I want to talk about the fact that Robin did not invite Wendy and her kids to the event. 
Um, this is what I felt like they were doing uh, to Monique when you like want to, you know, push somebody out of the show, not just out of the circle. You don't want them on the show. So now you're having events and you feel like you're going to come up with a reason to not invite them to events. Mm. So to me, I don't feel like, first of all, Robin, Wendy didn't like point at y'all and say, who said that? She didn't do that. She said, okay, so was it just Giselle that said that or was it Robin too? That was exactly her words. It wasn't no extra energy behind it. It was just clarification. You took that and decided to use that as a reason for why you didn't invite her and her kids to your whack ass family event. When the truth of the matter is, you still mad because she called you and Juan's relationship fake last season after she had been here long enough to watch him not show up for you. And once again, he didn't show up to the little, you know, family day shit. It was just you and the kids. So I feel like Robin is full of shit. She was wrong. You should have still invited Wendy and her kids. That was a perfect opportunity for y'all not to have to really be in close quarters because y'all could focus on y'all kids. The men, you know, Eddie probably would have come. So Wendy probably would have had, you know, her husband there to also help Kate, you know, because y'all know when the, the husbands are there, they don't fight as badly. So I just was looking at the situation like, I don't care what you're talking about, Robin. You're more white than black, yet your roller wrap is stiff. I don't like you. <laughs> um, I think that was so messed up for her to not include Wendy and then had the audacity to designate Candace as the auntie for somebody else's children. Who the hell do you think you are? I also think it's very interesting. I'm glad that you brought up what Wendy said about Robin last season because now I'm starting to see how she has Juan Dixon more on the show and him actually acting as though he's in agreement with the things that she does like, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's see if Candace will let the kids. Like, Juan, you knew that didn't make no damn sense. You just went along with it to make it seem like you are supporting Miss Robin. Did y'all catch Watch What Happens Live when Andy asked Robin about when she's getting married again or, or when the oh. wedding is going to happen? And she was yeah. like, oh, watch the show. He said, but that's not on the show this okay. season. I said, how embarrassing. Um, also, why is she calling her sister-in-law, her future sister-in-law, when she damn near being your sister-in-law this whole time? I was so confused. Um, I think just ultimately, Robin, I think that was very whack of you to not invite this woman. I, I, I don't. And then here's the other gag. Not only did you not invite Wendy, you chose to designate Candace to get this woman's kids overlooking the fact that they have a dad. So mm. you didn't even want the daddy there either. You went straight over there to Candace. You, like, that is some crazy sh there, girl. And you know it was wrong, too. She's wrong for that. I hate that in my mind, I saw it for Robin based off of episode one or two. Mm -hmm. because now I'm like okay this is exactly why I don't fuck with you this is exactly why when I speak of Robin I have to say no relation because the Dixon is not Dixon -y. Um, <laughs> but yeah I, I hate it Um, I think that she's doing more work to solidify her spot on the show but what I do hate is how you can be on this show and coast for seasons and to Jamie's point when you feel like it you feel like you have enough clout to ice people out after people have been asking for you to go for seasons. So I did see that clip of Watch What Happens Live with Jamil Hill. And I was laughing because Jamil Hill was laughing whenever she was like, ha ha, that didn't happen this season. So I wonder if that's a bit of a warning, almost like we didn't get it again, Robin. So, so what are you going to give? Like when your boss sits there and says, you, you trying to fool the fans, but I'm going to let you know that I know that you played us for another season. Does that mean you you put on a, on a you know, the improvement plan? You know how they do on jobs before they let you go? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Puke? What is it? A PFP? Personal. <laughs> performance. A personal, in, oh, performance. Yeah. Performance improvement plan. Child. Is that your pit, Robin? That's her pit because Miss Robin is working over time, I have to say. And that roller wrap is just so stiff. It doesn't make any sense to me. You are like 51% Caucasian. Why is it so stiff? What's going on? I'm sorry. Anyway, so then lastly, well, the only other thing. My sound left. It did? Am I good? Y'all can hear me? I'm going to fix this audio. Yeah. Okay. 
The only other thing to talk about was Ashley and Michael's divorce. Do y'all really think Ashley and Michael are getting a divorce? Because I don't know. I feel like yes. And then sometimes I'm like, Ashley, I don't trust you. So I feel like you might be trying to pull a wool over my eyes. I feel like they may not. I feel like it is giving storyline. That's the plot twist. Um, I also thought it was interesting when she was writing her statement to make the announcement that they are separating. That she sat up there and told the girl that she wanted to put everything out on that Friday. And that day was on March 30th. So the girl was like, oh, later on that week. So I had to go back and look at the calendar. March 30th was on the Wednesday. So that means that Friday would have been April Fool's Day. So you wanted to drop it on a day that was going to cause a ton of confusion for everybody. Therefore, bringing this storyline causing confusion to the people because we don't know what's going on. You talk about Michael's getting a vasectomy because he doesn't want you to get pregnant. But then you also turn around and say that... Um, you also turn around and say that y'all not really having sex like that or whatever. So I'm like, well, which one? Why is he getting a vasectomy? And not because he thinks you're trying to get pregnant, but y'all not having it. Like, that's the night. I think you're lying. I, I think that you're lying. I'm not trusting Ashley. Um, I want to trust her because she cried so much on like, what the last episode. Remember how she was crying on the shoulder that day yeah. at that house? Like, mm -hmm. um, I think I'm making a mistake or whatever. I'm like, girl, you definitely not making a mistake. However, I feel like it's giving storyline. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mega might leak the story of the divorce to the blog. She was all smiles in that car. I'm wondering about that. Do y'all think she leaked it? I don't know what to think about Ashley because on, a, on one level, I don't even really care. And on another level, the only thing I cared about was I thought that you and Candace were going to be able to put your issues to the side now moving forward. Mm -hmm. But to see how she started off this season, I'm sorry, y'all. I saw the glee in Ashley's eyes when she reported that story about Chris. You got the information that Chris works at that hotel and you still decided to report that story to Candace as if there was some validity to her husband flirting with you. And now next week we see you saying that, oh, it doesn't feel good. Well, yeah, it doesn't feel good. But also your husband is actually doing these things. Correct. Like, Correct. I saw Ashley crying about that bag. I, I feel like Ashley, whenever she said, do I feel like I make, uh, am I making a mistake? She was crying about the bag and she was crying about the security of her children. I don't think it had nothing to do with that marriage. Mm. Mm. I mean, I don't think she really likes him. I don't. I think that how could you? I think that we all know that Michael is not attractive. And anytime Ashley, excuse me, anytime Ashley tries to pretend like her coochie is hot for Michael, I'm like, Ashley, you're a liar. Your coochie is not hot for Michael. It's all been a lie. It's all been a lie because you wanted the money. Like there are some girls that can lay down and fuck a man that they're really not attracted to. They can convince themselves they're attracted to this man because they know the money and the overall outcome is their main focus. I can be 40, 50, 60 years old fucking every young man I want to as long as I fuck this one old nasty man for at least 10 good years and then i can get everything i need for the rest of my life i think that is the mindset when you have been in a in like you know extreme lack when when ashley talks about her mama living under the bridge with a crackhead that should let you know i say under the bridge but she said in a tent but that should let you know that ashley comes from extreme lack and when you yeah. come from extreme lack you're willing to do so much in order to get out of that lack and there are some of us who never experienced that lack i didn't struggle hard enough to suck dick for money so <laughs> i know people who did i know people who did and, oh, I, and i'm not mad at y'all but essentially i feel like there, there's a difference and i think because ashley was in such a level of lack with that mama and the daddy issues that yeah i think she's absolutely comfortable was sucking all of old balls and, and yes. having threesomes with ugly white women that she's not attracted to so Michael can make sure that she has a very cushy life for the rest of her life. Yes, perfectly said, lack. And that's a theme that I feel like we've talked about among other shows. Like when I said that uh, the foster kids be, be lying, not all of them, but you remember when I was speaking about Marlo? She comes from a, a, a place of lack. So I'm glad you said that. Anybody who comes from a place of lack will do whatever it takes by any means necessary, even if it's not ethical. Right. Absolutely. 
I mean, listen, um, y'all need to read White Oleander. It'll let y'all know how growing up in a space of lack will have you out here doing everything for some dick. Um, let's see, is that Karen situation too? Honestly, no. No. I think that Karen was absolutely attracted to Ray Jamie? when they got married. Jamie? No, I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to make my point and I'm going to let it go. Karen comes <laughs> from... Even though she comes from this, from like a small town, she come from like being the little princess of a small town. I think Karen always knew that she needed to find her a man that had money that would take care of her. That was always going to be an older man. I do believe that when Ray was between, you know, 40, 50 and 60, she was attracted to him. But now he's like 70 years old. It doesn't matter how attracted she is to him. He probably can't do what needs to be done for Karen's 50 year old cooch. So I love my husband. I don't want to not be with him, but I'm going to go get this young dick because I'm still 50 something years old and I'm not done fucking just because he is like, that's what I feel like Karen is going through. She like when she was 30 and he was 50, I think that shit was hot and heavy. Okay. I really do. I, I believe that because at the end of the day, Ray wasn't no like, you know, like just terrible looking man. He seems well, he very nice. He got money. He seemed like a nice looking man when he was 50. <laughs> And she was 30, that was like a win. But now that she's 50 and he's 70, it's given I need dick and I'm not dead yet. So you on your way out, I'm not, I'm going to need dick that work. And you're going to have to be okay with it because you don't want me to leave you and I don't want to leave you. But I'm not dead yet neither, Ray. Right. And your dick probably <clears throat> is. Oh, help, help. It's, it's help. life. It's help. life, y'all. But I'd have to agree. Right. Yeah. So, no, it's not the same. I don't think Ashley was ever really attracted to Michael. I just think that Ashley, living in her space of lack, was able to convince herself she was. But I think that Karen was, you know, attracted to Ray when he got married. No, Ashley definitely wasn't really attracted to Michael, in my opinion. I feel like what she was attracted to was the idea of having a dad. I hate to say it because I know her dad wasn't there. So she went looking for that and she found that in Michael. And it's the, it really shows up now that they're getting this divorce, uh, supposedly, because of how in charge of things he is. Like, she was looking for a dad and a mate, you know, honestly, because she didn't have hers. I agree. Karen um, had her parents. That's what I'm about to say. Karen had her parents. Karen comes from, like, a lifestyle that she was just trying to keep what I think she had become accustomed to, honestly. Karen probably is one of them girls that got pregnant by a nigga she was in love with, but he didn't have no money. And her family told her and she got pregnant and watched him not be there for her. So she was like, you know what? I'm going to listen to my parents. The next man that I'm with, I'm going to make sure he got money. And that was Ray. I really do think that. Now, when it comes to Mia and Gordon, Mia already told y'all what it was. Mia was a stripper. Mia was a stripper looking for a man that was going to be the easiest for her to deal with. I'm going to tell you, I think she likes G. I think oh, yeah. G and Mia enjoy each other's company for sure when it comes to G sexual shit i think they like each other karen and ray i do i was I, just about to say that jamie it, it, mia is going to be like karen when they get older yeah mm -hmm. for sure um Absolutely. but i will say i think that the difference between karen and mia is that karen would never stoop as low as mia so karen holds herself to a higher accord so i think her relationship in essence was probably more genuine because karen holds herself to a higher accord mm -hmm. whereas mia i think mia came from the street yeah. so but i also feel like there's something about mia and g's relationship that makes me feel like mia like her husband it may not be you know everybody not gonna be able to get you know a nigga that look like lyric with buku money and then be like all happy and shit like no that's not how it's gonna go you gonna have to get a nigga that look like lyric with no money or you gonna have to get a nigga with money that look like your grandfather so you gonna have to decide <laughs> what you won't fuck with. And with me, like, it'd be like them posts on Facebook. You got five dollars to create your dream man. Right. <laughs> <You know. laughs> yep. You know, and I think there's some women like Mia that can find a happy medium. If the nigga is freaky enough, then she can get with it. I think G it has a high sex drive and is really freaky. So for her, I think he can satisfy her. As long as his shit is working. As soon as it stops working, G gonna have to worry about getting cheated on by the pool boy. You know? I about gagged when you said that because it made me think about when he stuck his tongue out of Karen. 
I think you the one that hugged Karen so tight because you felt her titties in her back. <laughs> I think you did it. Nasty old ass. Sure. Okay. That's it. Because um, Robin Funday was whack. Do y'all think that Karen left because of Giselle? I mean, because of uh, Sharice or because she was actually like sinuses and stuff? I feel I like think it could have been a little bit of both. At first, I was thinking that it was primarily because she's sick. I said it could be a little bit of both. She already mm -hmm. said on her live she don't fuck with her. So I think she already overstepped because last week she had the, um, the fever. This time you can hear that she has a terrible cough. So you could tell the lady kind of sick. So if you think I'm going to be some getting over my sickness and I got to argue with this, I'm yeah. going to go home. Like I did my time. I came. I'm, I'm sorry. Go. No one's going to argue with big back Sharice. It's just not fun. Um, and that's what I called her. And I stand by it. She's getting Karen going to argue with her before the season over with. Well, she will. Yeah. She going to uh -huh. tell. She going to whoop her. I like that Karen said. I don't give a fuck about her. <laughs> Karen was cursing. Karen was cursing like a bitch that don't care. I don't give a fuck about her. I don't like the bitch and I don't give a fuck. That's what I said. Yeah, <laughs> that's when you know Karen don't like you. Because Karen, don't, I, don't, I don't really hear yeah, her like cuss. Mm -hmm. She don't. She's very much she regarded. I'm not going to cuss if I don't have to, but I swear I just like that bitch. Back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love Karen. Yeah. Y'all know I love Karen. I don't care what nobody say. But that's it. That's all. So let's go ahead and move on to love and marriage. Huntsville to end our oh, TV God. show talk. Okay. So I want to start off with a conversation between Tisha and Destiny because I feel like, aren't you two hating ass bitches coming together to hate on Mel together? Destiny, girl, you know I like you. But whenever you're around, Tisha is giving two hating ass bitches coming together yeah, to formate like, the hate. You feel like Destiny? I do. I ain't gonna lie. Like, on a personal level, like on a personal level, on social media, like. I don't think I do. I can't. I, I just. It's hard for me to dislike people that haven't like done anything to me that still are nice to me. It's hard for me to dislike them. Destiny's I don't still like nice to me. I can't trust in the way that she's moved. But like if she, I fall out with somebody, be my friend. This social media. <laughs> yeah, you like seeing her. Y'all my friends. Y'all different. Yeah, when I saw her with her man, I was like, "All right, bitch, you look cute. Your reunion dress was trash, but that's okay. You're still pretty. You'll do better when you have more money next season." Um, but you know, that's not my friend. Like y'all, my friends. I just, <laughs> I said she can go home next season. <laughs> and it's I don't hate Destiny. I have found these past few episodes of her to be extremely distasteful, in yes. my opinion. And I just cannot rock with that. Um, her talking to um, Tisha, talking about Stormy and saying that if you want us to be good, then you got to let go of this thing of me and uh, Melody. Well, if you want you and Stormy to be good, stop holding her to the standard of the issue you have with Melody because you feel like Melody used you as a, or, or was saying that you were somebody's charity case because she gave you money. Then why would you turn around and put that on Stormy and say, I don't want your bag because you're friends with somebody that said that I was a, a part of a charity case. So what it like, if you want her to let go of the male situation, then you need to let go of that too as you're her friend. Then you upset that Melody wasn't speaking to you at the event, but it wouldn't have mattered because Stormy right. came there with gifts in tow and you still did disrespected her had your back to her at your event but you're yep. saying that this was your moment it was about you but you made yourself look like a fool at your own event so because yep. of that you don't know how to read the room you're not cognizant enough you're quote unquote on 10 it just didn't make destiny look it good in that in, in the light that she was in and i'm sure she's probably an amazing person outside of the show so the judgment that we give you is based on what it is that we see so Based on what it is I that agree. I see, it's not my cup of tea. Like, I don't I really that. like that. I, the judgment it, that we give you is based on what we see. Based yes. Based on what we see is not my cup of tea. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Agreed. I can't trust nobody. Like, I, I can't like anyone who I see move like a snake. Down to the language that Destiny uses to trigger people, that's real snake-like. Yeah. That's why on that other show, um, Bell Collective, even though I, I, Keisha is annoying as hell, I still fool with her, even though she stood up for Tamper at the end. Mm -hmm. I feel like you got to have some sort of code based on how you move when you don't fool with somebody. Destiny don't have a code, in mm -hmm. my opinion. 
She don't have a code at all. She do. It it's just to the men. Mm. I'm gonna say that because I feel like, don't you feel like no matter what's going on, that code is in place for Martell? It's a code from you, right? It I guess so, considering the fact that she only wants to give credit to Martell for bringing her onto the show. Mm. So I guess that does make sense. And I mean, maybe she aligns herself more so with male energy and she gets along more so with male energy. People have to understand, and this is not a dig or disrespect to Destiny, but I think that because she did not have her mom, I think that may have a lot to do with it. You know, I feel like she probably don't really trust women like that for real. That's so right. once somebody crosses her, it's even more like difficult for her to get closer. Some women are easy. It's there. It's just easier for them to be closer to guys right. than yeah. it is to women. And she's trying this with Tisha, you know, and um, you know Tisha what? is, she ain't nothing but a needle. She needs another <clears throat> strong personality. Yes. That's going to talk that shit because Tisha doesn't know how to stand on her own. And uh, honestly, she tries, but it just doesn't land for her. It's crazy that you say that because I feel like that's kind of like me. I just found out that I don't have a lot of female friends because of, you know, <clears throat> my overall distrust for women. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize I had a distrust for women because I thought me and my old girl was good. But, you know, upon further investigation and therapy, I realized that I had some unresolved issues with my old girl, <clears throat> with my mother. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I do understand that part of destiny. Um, and it's hard for me to be mean to people that are nice to me. But y'all know I say however I feel once we get to these reviews. You know what I'm saying? Once we get to this conversation up here, it is what it is. And I've always felt like she was immature. She could not handle her emotions. And it brings me back to when she called Stormy emotionally unintelligent. When I felt like if anybody's unintelligent or inintelligent child, however it's, you know, worded, it was you. <clears throat> because how can you feel like you can tell somebody, sweetie, like they're not picking up on your tone and act as if they don't have emotional intelligence? That was a projection if I've ever seen one. And I, you know, y'all know I said I didn't like the fact that she could not see the same, the similarities between Martel and LeBaric, but then won't sit up here and tell me how. You know, uh, Mel ain't shit because Mel decided to detach from a situation she wasn't comfortable with, which I feel like is never a bad thing. I don't give a fuck what you're talking about. If she felt a way about the way you was dealing with her, if she wanted to detach from you without conversation, I don't see anything wrong with that. Everybody feel like they always deserving of some fucking conversation where really mm -hmm. we ain't got to talk about shit. If I don't fuck with you and I feel like I've learned, I got it. We don't need to talk about nothing. I got it. I'm good. I'm good on you. I got it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but, you know, personally, you know what I'm saying? Like, personally, like, I'm, of course, I'm going to go up for male personally. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, you know, yeah, Destiny is very male identified. She needs a crew for her to be, you know, have beef with somebody. You let your own attitude fuck up your whole event. Sitting up there talking about male brought the negative energy, Tisha. No. Destiny had negative energy as soon as Stormy walked in the room and it didn't even make sense because Stormy was absolutely, as Nisi would say, letting her sound bowls affect her energy and came in there right. Whereas mm -hmm. if you would have told me I couldn't come in when I pulled up, I would be like, I'm going to take my flowers, put them on my table, and I'm going to take my Gucci bag and give it to my little niece and you can suck my dick. That's how I would have felt. Right. Destiny to fire her makeup artist because when she was getting ready for that event, she let her makeup artist put a clown nose on her face. Ooh, the whole mask, walking, girl. And she walked into the event with her clown mask on. I'm it sorry. was sad. It was so I mean, sad. I kind of saw it for her before she started acting out in this retaliation thing. I feel like we see in retaliation destiny. And so yeah. I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't fool with it. No, because it feel like at some point, still, right is right and wrong is wrong. And that goes out the window for people like Destiny, for people like Tisha. Like, it just goes out the window. Um, and I'm still annoyed with Tisha because in the conversation in the conversation that they were having, Tisha is still acting like Mel and Wanda have been going tit for tat this whole time. And I'm like, no, they have not. Y'all, we watched live after live after live after live. And Mel said nothing. Until Carlos show. And then we was like, damn, she finally said something. And it was almost like, shit, I'm glad she finally said something. Because that bitch knows she was running her mouth for a good few months now. 
And then for, the thing for me with Tisha, Tisha, you know your mama is speaking on your behalf, but you never have that conversation with her for real, for real, because you don't want us to know how much you talk shit about Mel behind the scenes. I'm sorry. I can't go along with the idea that Tisha is a victim in all of this. I feel like Tisha has always been trying to <clears throat> make herself seem better than Mel, even when she was trying to use Mel. Mm -hmm. Trying to use Mel to get on, but then you make fun of her with Kimmy behind her back. And then when her, her husband cheats on her, you throw it in her face like, I've never dealt with that. You know, you may have dealt with that, but I have never dealt with that. And the truth of the matter is Marceau in some way is worse than Martel because Martel, we see Martel. Marceau tires you to fuck out with his bullshit. So <clears throat> essentially, I just kind of feel like Tisha has always been on bullshit because Wanda is her mother. Mm. And that's that on that. What did y'all think about Kiki being a drug, uh, being addicted to drugs, as Miss Marie Monroe's mama would say? I think it's something that's very common amongst people. Um, so it wasn't that big of a big of a wow type of factor thing. But I was glad that she shared what happened with her and didn't get nobody else the opportunity to spill that tea on her you know what i'm saying so i mean i'm glad that she said it Tell honestly it was anticlimactic i'm glad we found out what happened mm -hmm. but i really feel like i wish you would have sprayed marceau anyway because people understand getting addicted to pain medication <clears throat> they don't understand marceau not having any teeth and being an asshole and y'all protecting him all the time right so I just kind of wish she would have still said whatever it was about Marceau. About Marceau. Yeah. Like, it felt late. To me, I'm like, if you ain't going to say what it what it was with Marceau, girl, we don't care. Okay? It was dead <laughs> bugs. It was drugs. I don't care unless you <laughs> feel what she was going to say about Marceau. <clears throat> mm. Mm. Exactly. Mama been talking on her behalf her entire life, so she can't see it being wrong when it's always been. Mm. This show, this episode was definitely two things. One, it was the episode for the outsiders, meaning none main cast members. And two, it was an episode to show you just how much the outside cast has more going on than the main um, cast. And majority of the outside cast is all linked to Melody. Um, awkward, very weird. I also don't like that Mark was on the show. I felt like that was kind of messed up for that question. It's like, if Miss Van ain't even a main cast member, why are we talking about her life as far as who she's dated? Just because Wanda says that she has a husband and a boyfriend. Go find those people. Why are we asking this woman about this? I wish Miss Van would have said, I'm not going to engage in that mess. I'm not even going to talk about that. That's not even worth the conversation. Because here we are bringing yet another person onto the show mm -hmm. that's not a main cast member mm -hmm. to do what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's in a dirty t-shirt. Unnecessary. Like, girl. Looking like a homeless person. Oscar the Grouch. Girl, monster feel So last week when I talked Damn, do we we went live last week, right? No, the week before. No, the week before, yeah. When I talked to y'all about the car ride for the meeting, I told y'all it felt like to me that Kimmy was being shady towards Mel when she said in the car to Maurice, oh, it was just fun shade. We throw a little bit of shade, but we don't know how to take it. Mm -hmm. Personally, I felt like she was talking about Mel. <laughs> I felt like she was talking about Mel when she said it was fun shade. Because I feel like Mel said that when she was talking about oh well, her, her baby daddy being my DMs. I thought Mel's response was that it was fun, Shay. So I'm bringing that up to ask y'all, why is Kimmy trying to bring Mark on the show? It felt as though Kimmy was spearheading Mark coming on the show, whereas the Scott Ooh. brothers was like, leave my brother out of this. Somebody said mm. that Mark said something about Kimmy. I think Mark said that he dated Kimmy at some point. So no, Kimmy, Mark called her a side chick. Is that what it was? Yeah, he called her a side chick. And she didn't like that. I think she would probably want that to be a dream. Yeah. Because he sat on that live with Kyle were talking all of that. Right. Yeah, no, I remember they did a lot of lies, but I wasn't interested in watching because it seemed like you can't give a real perspective when you're just mad at the main cast members because you're not on the show and you're not being featured. Like, that's what right. they seemed like. They were just mad that they weren't being featured. You know, they weren't being paid for their pain. 
so to speak. But when it comes to Mark, <clears throat> Mark is one of those people that will make it seem as if anything is disrespect that he can disrespect you. Miss Van does not have to categorize you guys' relationship the way you want to. If she says that you're her friend, that doesn't mean that she didn't fuck you. That just means that you were just her friend. When we talk about this, I get aggravated because I'm like, everybody is ignoring the fact that older women above a certain age call every nigga they fuck with just their friend. They never say that was my man. They never say I was in a relationship with him. They always just say, that was my friend. That's what old women do. Like at a certain, once you get over like 50, if you're not married, that nigga is just your friend. Period. That's how it is. So it's annoying for me, for everybody to act like it's about church. It's not about church. I don't think it has anything to do with Miss Van being a woman of God. I think it has more so to do with the fact that I don't talk on my coochie because I'm too old for that. And second of all, I didn't bring it up. Marceau said there was a sex tape with Miss Van and his brother. It wasn't even Marcus, I feel like, that originally really brought it on the show. What brought it on the show to me was when Marceau said that shit either on Instagram or Twitter about how Miss Van had a sex tape with Mark. And that was what started making us pay attention to this whole conversation about Mark and Miss Van because nobody was listening to it or even really cared before then. So when Marceau was talking to Mark, I was like, that's why Mark is laughing because Mark knows that you've taken everything that he's ever said to you about him and Miss Vanessa to use it against Mel. He he knows this, which is why you talking to him is hilarious to him because you've used it. Even the, the Vanessa Scott Coke bottle shit like Marceau is the one that put that shit out. So, you know, I feel like everybody's mm. acting like it's Mark, but nobody's listening to Mark because nobody cares about Mark. For mm. real, for real. None of Mark shit makes it to the show unless somebody on the show references it. Mel doesn't say anything about Mark. Miss Van is not on the show saying anything about Mark. Who brings up Mark? Kimmy. Because Kimmy's mad about what Mark is saying. So she wants Marceau and Maurice to correct it. But nobody's going to be honest about that because then we would have to really like glue into Kimmy and Maurice. And you know she don't want us to do that. Mm. So mm. there's that. Mm. I might be tripping. Part of me felt like Kimmy partially wanted Mark to come on here to expose the relationship. Mm. It's something about I, I I might be tripping, and it probably do sound like I'm tripping, but Agreed. it's an inkling. <laughs> Agreed on me tripping. <laughs> it's an inkling of me that really feels like Kimmy does not see it for Mel the same way that Tisha don't see it. But Kimmy ain't as outspoken about it. I think she's more strategic with her relationships. But mm. I, I don't know. We gonna see. Time will tell. You know what? I think it's funny that you say that. and Because I feel like we probably gonna circle back around to it. I think a lot of us don't want to believe that Kimmy has some underlying issue with Mel. Because then we would be looking at Kimmy like she was like Tisha. Because essentially Mel hasn't done anything to Kimmy. So if Kimmy dislikes her, it's kind of like Why? Oh, so you can protect Maurice? So nobody finds out the truth about how Maurice really is? Well, you know that's not her fault. And you know we can see him based off your interactions with him. So then it will bring it back to you. So I would really hope that she would not have an issue with Mel about something that's happened on this show. Because I haven't seen anything that Mel has done to harm Kimmy. I just haven't. I mean, honestly, I don't even feel like Mel has really done anything to Tisha. With the exception of laughing at you while you act like your husband is faithful, I don't really know what else Mel has really done to Tisha that Tisha hasn't kind of, you know, done to Mel first. So I don't know. I just feel like they're the women that want to stay with the men. So they do what the men want them to do. And I think the men are bothered by the women who leave ain't shit men. I think whenever there's a, a man out there that's dogging his woman out and wants her to be okay with it, he's upset whenever there's a woman that has left some ain't shit nigga. And so I think Marceau and Maurice just don't want their women to catch the male bug and drop them for the way they treat their women. So they have to create beef and kind of, I think, make male an adversary unnecessarily just so their women don't look at Mel and be like, you know what? I probably could do better by my goddamn self. Mm. 
So, you know, it is what it is. But I listen, Mark made me want to know more about their childhood. Who raised you niggas? Because y'all really don't like women. When Mark said he's not sensitive to women, I was like, what does that mean? That means he's abusive. That means um, he's going to be disrespectful. He harasses mm -hmm. them. It means mm -hmm. a lot of things. Um, what also got me was when he said, um, if you're going to fight me, you better pack a lunch. Bring a lunch? Yes. No one is fighting you. That's the thing. No one even discusses you on that side. You At need all. a moment. You were jealous of your brothers for having a moment. So you decided to find the smallest little hair and ride her all the way into Huntsville. Um, and I hate it. Like you just found something. You just dragged on it, dragged on it, dragged on it. Like the things that he said about Mel and her mama, like on sitting on somebody's live, I saw a quick little snippet. He needs to be like taken care of for that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, that's some wild ass shit. because now it's going outside of that, all because and it's so funny. Because have you looked at yourself? Have you seen yourself lately? Right. Do you know what you look like? Okay, yeah. do you know what you talk like? Why yeah. would any woman really want you? And if she, I, I would deny you too, because that's what the whole thing is about. You upset because you're being denied. Mm -hmm. The same man that was sitting on live with Miss Wanda with a booger sitting in his nose. Like, do you know how <laughs> old you are? Ooh, no, 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 what's no. wrong? Yeah, like, I'll never forget yeah. that. Yeah, girl, it's just hanging there. And he doing all this talking. I'm like, you don't see that? Get that, baby. Yeah. You don't see that? Just disgusting. <laughs> but you over here trying to drag folks, but you can't even make sure your appearance is good. Hence, how you also looked, you look like a booger walking down to sit with your brothers. Like, that's what I'm not understanding. Like, I, 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 mm -mm. that's one Scott I don't want on the show. Like, y'all have given us enough Scots for y'all to add more. I feel like it's a really a slap in the face to the Holtz, in my opinion. I definitely feel like it's a slap in the face to Miss Van. You know, I, I don't know who's running it over there, but it's like hella, hella disrespectful. Y'all create these problems and then want to be mad at the general public when they sit up there and and classify your show in a certain genre or non-genre or whatever. You want to sit up there and feel away about it. But this is what y'all create. They just going off of what they see. They judging right. what they see. It's all good when you being praised, though. Hmm. Huh. But when you're right. not being praised, then all of a sudden, so you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah. Well, with that being said, I feel like we can go ahead and let the TVT of it all go. I think we are done. There's nothing else to discuss with TVT. But um, I would like to discuss a few things in, um, you know, the world that have taken place. So let's just do a little quick gossip chat. <laughs> Okay, y'all. So um, I don't have a picture because y'all know we weren't planning on doing this show, right? But this morning we all awoke and I specifically woke up to see Nisi and Jamie in the DMs talking about it before I even saw any post because I always go see what they have said in the morning when I first wake up before anything because they usually get up before me. So I get up and the first thing I see that they're talking about is offset. I mean, I mean, sorry, I'm always gonna say offset first. Take off being killed in Houston last night on Halloween night. And I got on social media and I was just honestly, I was kind of like so floored and saddened and was not expecting that. Mm -hmm. Um, specifically because Takeoff is like one of the most least problematic, quiet, you know, rappers ever. Honestly, I feel like as much as Migos is well known, Migos are not street dudes to me. Migos are the funny, you know, charismatic dudes that was really into music in high school. They wasn't in the street shit. They like their music. They like to dance. They like to tell jokes and have fun. They like the girls. But they don't really do street shit like that. That's how I've always seen them. And then when I think about it, the only reason why I really even know about the Migos like that is because of Donald Glover. 
Like Donald Glover, one of the most, you know, I feel like, for lack of a better term, Caucasian black men of us, he, is, you know, he's not gang. It's not gang gang. And he was the first person I feel like that co-signed the Migos. And now Migos is like on that level of Bone Thugs and Harmony and NWA. Like they are cemented in history as one of the biggest male rap groups of all time, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. They changed the sound. Um, I love the synchronicity when they will perform together. Um, I really had like a love for they showmanship and they style, to be honest. Like, even back to when you know who, who, who say uh uh take all left all bad bougie. Like <laughs> who, who say we left all bad bougie? Okay, listen, they all had on them 70s floral like t-shirts, I mean shirts and shit. I love them, like just because it was it was fun to me. So when we got up this morning and found out that Takeoff had gotten killed, I was really saddened by that and was not expecting it. And then we find out, you know, through some tea, it's alleged, we don't know if it's true or not, but people are saying that they were playing a dice game and Quavo got into it with, you know, some do dirt niggas and somebody on Quavo and Takeoff side of things popped up. And started bussing, allegedly. And then the other side started bussing. And Takeoff got hit by a stray bullet first from the person that came with them. I don't know if this is true at this time. It's been alleged that it was uh that it was Quavo's uncle. I'm not sure. I don't know if that's true or not. Please do not quote me on it. Everything is still up in the air. But what we do know is that. Based off of video footage and everything, they was playing a dice game. Quavo had some words and then gunshot rang in the air. And the the person that died was Takeoff, who is quiet and doesn't really do anything. And they say it really just popped up and didn't know what was going on at the time. So um, this is real sad to me, y'all. But I feel like the conversation that it has sparked I think is very important because we talked about this behind the scenes about how we feel about the fact that, you know, in essence, rap music and hip hop promotes handling conflict with other black men with violence and not just the violence of fighting, but the violence of shooting and killing. So to see this happen to somebody that we know is not really a part of the scene like that, it hurts worse. And I think it gives brevity to the, the conversation that something else needs to be talked about in these moments, not just rest in peace, not just, oh, this is so sad, but when are we going to discuss the fact that the industry in which they work in is a negative environment that I think chants and speaks things that can come on people that don't deserve that. It's not takeoff's fault. But the industry in the music itself is too negative for anything you know, else to happen. But um, you know, you yeah. The video designer. Yes, I did. And he was like, "I'm done." Yeah. See, I feel like it's I feel like it's a bit of both. Like it's the environment that they're around. I'm not gonna say it's purely the music because part of me wonders. <laughs> I might be tripping, but dice at a bowling alley. I'm like, is that just the gambling? That might just be the gambling. No, alley. that seems some hood. That was some hood gang shit to me. Like it was like two dudes in some hood gang shit because that's what their celebrity puts them out as. So they have to like be with their projected as, even if that's not them. I wasn't thinking it was. This is what I was. I was thinking it was one of them underwear. Have y'all seen that movie called Molly's Game? Molly's Game is basically based on a true story. White woman, she started this like underground gambling thing that a lot of famous people used to go to. So in my mind, I'm like, is this just an underground gambling spot that you get the scammers going to? For you in Houston, you get the rich people going to, and that was just a part of the environment that they were in. I don't want to say that this situation is uh, manifested through his music. I feel like we see it in other rappers, but this one, I don't know if I can say that. I really don't. 
let me be clear. It's not that I feel like him personally has manifested this in the music. I don't think that he has put out that energy at all. I think that it's just the overall energy of the music industry. Because to me, what I've seen is that when rappers get to a certain level, they have to get involved in this gang shit for some reason, Mm -hmm. either for protection or so that they can go from city to city without people fucking with them. So Mm -hmm. it seems like we have to befriend and be around people who are more into a life than we are just because we're rap artists. And so then we have to, you know, I mean, a dice game don't mean that somebody should get shot and killed. This was obviously a moment where people just couldn't control themselves in a heated argument. But it goes back to the fact that a lot of this environment promotes them to not control themselves. It tells them to handle themselves with guns instead of conflict resolution and talking. So it feels like even if this is not what they promoted, the energy itself is to handle situations in the way that this situation was handled. We beefing, so we pull out guns instead of we beefing, so we talk, maybe fist fight and get over it, you know? Uh, yeah, I love that you elaborated on that because I can't see nothing you said at all. Yeah. Um, music in general does that. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about rappers like extension extension xxx um i'm thinking about even uh damn i'm gonna forget his name I hate nipsey that I'm his name um no not nipsey the one who is it me or is nipsey sound weird it sound weird okay mm, okay i don't know what to do go ahead the pnb rock guy no oh, i'm not sure who she was talking about but um yeah i just i yeah, I agree. That's what we were talking about earlier. Like, yeah, these songs, like a lot of what you listen to is like affirmations and what you bring it into your life a bit. Um, yeah, I think it just pretty much teaches them how to handle situations. They always talking about if somebody gets sick, they're going to pop them, hit them with the two, three, whatever, da 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 da. You know, unfortunately, uh, very sad situation. Like, I don't get it. I don't know what to say about it. It's just really sad. It's so sad. I, unfortunate because he's one of the quietest ones out of everybody and he For gets real. caught up in the crossfire. Like and it's so sad. Like and I, and the thing that makes me upset though is the way social media responds to things. And I saw Benzino get online talking about the internet is the worst thing to ever happen to black people. And I'm like, nigga, shut up. No, it's not. Um, you know, as a black person that makes money off the internet that has more access. And, and had, you know what I'm saying? Because of the internet, no, I don't believe that. I believe that people act the way they are regardless of the internet. And niggas was out here killing each other, i.e. Tupac Biggie, in the rap industry before there was the internet or social media. This energy has always been there because this is what y'all promote in this culture and this environment. Y'all promote, don't talk about it. Don't be a punk. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry, but like essentially the culture is to always have to out nigga somebody. Yeah. And it gets, a, and then that's not, that's not on takeoff, but it feels like that's what happened. And he just got caught in the crossfire of that type of situation. We arguing niggas got to prove a point. So they pull out guns, but like essentially that's what y'all promote in this environment and hip hop and black culture Y'all promote that if, oh, somebody coming at you, oh, somebody playing with you, you got to handle that. Like, I come from New Orleans. Like, niggas die all the time because of they running their mouth. I just finished having a conversation talking about how I don't get involved in local shit because the last time there was a social media presence that got, you know, that was really big was Messi Maya. And Messi Maya got killed, a lot of people believe, because of the things he said online. Yeah. I remember that. So when people come to me with New Orleans shit and this one cheating on this one and this girl calling it, I don't get involved in none of that shit. I handle celebrity shit. I handle blog shit. And I stay away from that local shit because I live here. And here, Mm -hmm. they going to kill you behind some dumb shit. It Mm -hmm. don't matter what you talking about. If they feel like you, you know, you playing with them, they going to want to kill you about it. That's, That's just how it is. So I do feel like we need to have conversations about changing the energy in our in black culture period 
because I think that less violence needs to be promoted as a way of handling things versus always feeling like you need to prove a point to somebody when it's always somebody tougher. Always. Yeah. Um, I think it's really tragic and disgusting that a lot of people started to blame Cardi B and Nikki. Um, saying that Cardi B uh drove a wedge in between um <laughs> what? <laughs> How we yeah. got back the women? <laughs> I'm about to I'm about to share a link in the chat, uh Bondi, but they started to like go in on um Cardi B, like saying, I hope you happy now, or whatever you uh brought a wedge in between the family and stuff, and then ended up bringing Nikki into it some kind of way. Um, I, so I probably should have just weird. shared the post. I'm about to pull it up. That you know what? That's what I thought about because I saw people blaming Quavo, um, saying that he set it up because you know he wanted them to go solo, and I'm just like, y'all are. They already out. went solo. Why That's do y'all not saying. think like at all? Say he was just too calm. What I haven't watched the video. Refused to watch it. I'm not watching it. To, but people were saying he was a shell shock. What do you mean? Like I'm sure. Y'all yeah, can see that. Yeah. Okay. Um. So it says, Cardi B. Now that takeoff is gone, hope you are happy now. Destroying a family instead of being a peacemaker as their brother or homie's wife. Now that he's dead, hope you are happy because you will never get to to fix things. Never. Foolish girl, make music without being a sack of mess. Oh wow. Respectfully, Nicki Minaj was literally just hanging with a man who was threatening Quavo and his family. I'm just saying it's a coincidence, but RIP to him. And I hope this allows for some fresh perspective from both sides. Y'all are really agents of chaos online with this shit. I blame Cardi B for takeoffs that dice game or not. That motherfucker know a voodoo priest or something. Y'all like Takesha, Takesha LaFay, who probably doesn't even mean the shit that she's posting, but just posting it for attention. Like you, you gonna receive some type of karmic energy for this type of shit. Like I don't even understand how y'all can be like this. This is terrible. Why are you silent about takeoff? That I don't know. Maybe because she's somewhere consoling her fucking husband. Correct. Cause you know that man probably was hurt behind this shit. Both of them, Quavo and like I don't believe for a second that they weren't both extremely distraught. We don't even know these men, and we were like, damn, that hurt. Like, you know, they probably felt that way about each other. Every time somebody passed, y'all amaze me with how mean-spirited y'all are and can be. Because what the fuck do you mean you're adding Cardi B talking about, are you happy now? Or saying they should have took Quavo or Offset. You this, he would have wanted this to happen to one of his own. You think this, I'm sure. You think he would have wanted this to happen to one of his own. Y'all are not good. They're not. Joey Neverland first tweet in this thread that made sense. Y'all please leave Nikki and Cardi B name out of this. The only person that is responsible for takeoffs that is the motherfucking shooter. How the fuck y'all get blaming Cardi B and dragging Nikki name in this? Please stop making takeoffs death another egg in the Cardi B Nicki Minaj beef basket. Not only are y'all minimizing his life to just uh, to just his connection with the two women but y'all forgetting that he knew both women and they're probably both grieving today just leave it be the internet be weird this is the part that mad weird able. my mind immediately went to cardi like not immediately but soon after my mind went to cardi because yeah. i knew that people was gonna do this they was gonna draw some type of connection or blame somehow to make somebody feel that like see this is why Yep. A lot of people have been commenting about uh just the state of rap. And I've noticed that. And I feel like um it was funny that when Sabrina Peterson, y'all know that's the woman that accused T.I. and Tiny of having them weird parties and stuff. We're not gonna delve no deeper into it, but y'all know. Sabrina came out and basically said, um, I just recently had to turn off one of their songs because they're rapping about Percocet Party and Fentanyl is the number one killer of our children. And then she said after, you know, after that, she said, um, it's the karma of the music. She said, I think it's the karma of the lyrics that are actually killing rappers. You can't feed a community lyrics that kill a community and also be safe. 
from the repercussions of that energy. Now, y'all may not like her, but there wasn't a lie told in what she said. And a lot of people felt like this isn't the time, but I'm like, okay, so when is it the time to talk about the fact that the overall energy is promoting death over resolution? Hmm. Like when when are we yeah, supposed to talk about it? it? It's literally like whenever you say, I had to stop myself. Okay, this sounds minimal, but it's along the lines of what she's saying. You know how people be like, oh my gosh, I'm dead, laughing. I, I stopped saying that. I be trying yeah. to stop. <laughs> I do that all the time. And then the other thing that I recently, like literally three days ago, where I was like, I got to get my mind right and speak positivity. I caught myself all the time saying, I cannot. Like, I cannot. Literally for anything. If I was struggling or anything, I would say, I cannot. So I literally, this, this goes back to words have power. Yeah. So that's, that's what she's simplifying it down to. And I don't think it's anything personal. But what she's saying is valid and it makes sense. Words have power. I agree, I agree. DC, because I used to always say, I'm lost. I am so lost. Like, I'm lost. I'm lost. You know what I'm saying? It's the smallest little thing. And then I had to catch myself like, I, I need to stop saying that because I, I did go through a period where I felt like I am lost. Like, what the hell? You know? Like, for real, for real. So I think that's a very valid point. It's so funny. I just, had I just the also have to that... say. Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to say that I find it so funny that it took take off to pass away for y'all to start having these conversations about the state of rap all of a sudden as though we didn't just use you, you know, know why though be rock and some other yeah, be individuals rock. but you know that, why right? though because they feel like take off didn't deserve it on some level people mm -hmm. feel like PNB rock was inviting that energy and they don't want to admit it but that's what I peeped from his interviews is that he was like y'all ain't about to punk me and so well, when what you about have Dolph? they ain't talk about that when young Dolph died I don't think he deserved it either I don't you think any of them saying? deserve this shit. I'm just saying, I think that on some level, people look at certain rappers like y'all in that life. So if that happened to y'all, y'all in that life. Mm -hmm. When they look at Takeoff, they don't really see that about him at all. So it really do seem like there's somebody that got caught in the crosshairs of this versus yeah. somebody that was taking part in it in some mm -hmm. capacity. So I think that's the difference. But I also feel like there comes a time when it's like, well, how many rappers are going to get killed this year before we start having these conversations about words mean power? Right. Like, and I was just about to say, you know, that I had that same moment, like both of y'all, I had the moment about saying I'm broke. I'll always be like, child, I'm broke. And I'm like, I need to stop saying that. And somebody told me that. Stop speaking that you are in this space that you're really not in. So stop saying it like 1, that. Like, so, you know, just like y'all was saying about things, I'm like, I have been making a conscious effort to stop saying that. You know what I'm saying? And also to be more conscious of like when I'm dead, I still will say it because I'm like, I'm, you know, dead laughing, but like, I'm not really dead. But I also feel like, bitch, I'm gonna die one day anyway. So me saying I'm dead is like, bitch, at some point you are gonna be dead. So I don't think it's rushing it. It's gonna happen anyway. Which I do feel what you mean, like to just be more conscious of the things you repeat, because I think we know as black people, y'all might want to ignore this, but that's a part of the reason why I feel like we miss out on a lot of the things that matter is because we ignore things that have been taught to us throughout century. And that is that words mean power. Black people have always known that the things they chant and the things they say over and over again have power. So when we sing songs and we, we repeat lyrics and energies in the music that's about dying and killing and, and just, you know, just anger and acting out in these egotistical ways, I think that it absolutely becomes something that people commit to how they handle themselves in life. And the energy around the people that promote that energy, even if it's not how they really are like, and I'm going to say it again, I don't think in any way, shape or form, any of these rappers deserve to be killed in the way that they're killed. But I think it would be very ignorant of us to continue to ignore the fact that the language around the music they create promotes how they end up dying. And that's by the hands of somebody that's too angry to control themselves. And I don't believe none of them folks saying they're not gonna listen to the rap music though. Oh yeah, you're done for rap. I don't believe that. I think you. I think you're done for rap for now. Yeah, for the day. 
Yeah. Just like y'all was done with Kanye at first and then y'all went back to him. Y'all may be mad at him now, but I ain't never went back to the nigga after he said slavery was a choice. I say everything he created beforehand, I might still go back to 808. Correct. And you know what I'm saying? But nothing moving forward. You can kiss my ass. So yeah. Um, I think that's it. That's all we had that we wanted to discuss with y'all. Um, y'all know it's an impromptu live, but sometimes the girls do their best work on impromptu. So um, we appreciate everybody who came through that are members of all three of our channels. Um, thank y'all for coming. We appreciate y'all being in the chat. Um, for everybody else that is catching this on the back end, we appreciate you guys. Make sure y'all like the video. Make sure you guys subscribe to all of our channels. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. And, you know, stay lifted out there, y'all, because... Shit is a little dark, so we always want to be a bright spot. So y'all make sure y'all have a good rest of y'all evening, and we'll see y'all. <laughs>